Super Tin, Bogey Tin, have there been any changes or adjustments to your agenda since it was published? No changes. All right, since there have been no changes, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All those in favor? Aye. All right, the agenda is approved. Now we'll now move on to the consent agenda. Has the board had the opportunity to review the items on the consent agenda? <laughs> is this. Uh, because they did a two-year conference before they were doing this. Okay. I believe that it's true. But this is part of it for us to move to the second year of our name. We'll now recess the regular meeting at 6.05. We'll enter a work session to discuss superintendent evaluation or superintendent communication. Great. Um, well, thank you. I'm excited to kind of get things started, and it seems totally appropriate to talk about evaluation before I get too far down the pathway of doing the work. And so having that clarity really is important for me. And, and having done this job a little bit, I, I had started with, where that wasn't as clear. And so I think this opportunity in early July is great for all of us and um, can provide some early direction for me. And so I wanted to sort of lay out some thoughts I had. And so I think I, you, you saw probably the email and some information on this was everything's drafts. <laughs> Just want to know everything you see can be changed, including the entry plan, because I don't believe I think I had a one page entry plan that sort of gave a, a you know, kind of a 30,000 foot view of what it would be. So, this is the actual plan. And so, I think part of the, this first year work is successful completion of this entry plan. And so, again, I think today is. Whether you want to walk through this, I think even just by goal to see is there some things I'm missing um, as we think about, you know, that's the starting place for this. And I feel like that also says part of my interest is, hey, I'm going to review this with the board, and just get back and make sure. So success in this initial year really is around some successful pieces of data in some pre-training that really cover a broad range of topics. It does start with goal two. With goal, goal one is sort of, um, I don't know if I have this out of order, so I have to um, the goal two, so the first page on goal two around effective governance. And again, I'm not going to read kind of bullet to bullet, hoping you've had a chance to read this and if you've taken some notes and feedback around and um, we'll kind of capture tonight some things that I need to either add to this or some feedback on the plan. So I don't know if we just want to take them kind of goal by goal around some of this room. Is this, am I on the right track with this, with the goals as well as the activities outlined here? I had, yeah, I think, well, the, the focus areas that I would say in addition to the entry plan. So the entry plan being one, we had three, three areas of focus, one being successful completion of the entry plan. 
focus area one is relations to the board, which really comes around some governance. Focus area two, educational leadership, which isn't probably as explicitly kind of captured in the entry plan. And then the focus area three being completion of the entry plan. Yeah, so you're right, there is five goals within this, so I wanted to sort of lay out the different aspects of entry that that kind of intent and reflection are areas that okay, if you're successful with this around, let's look at uh, student success and growth and well-being, which again is looking at the educational program that's currently going on, effective different district governance, that board superintendent relationship, collaborative relationships with building that whole stakeholder relationships with people across. Um, so that'll be important to look at that goal three. I think it was a, a laundry list of bullet um, groups. And I think there was some historical perspective, like former superintendents is not on there. So there's even some people that I think in my reflection of, of the success in this will be people meeting today I met with a former board chair, Jay Wood, um, and he was a board member for a long time. Period of time, I think about 20, 22, 23 years. And so, again, kind of that perspective of a former board member, but I didn't have that. And I think I'm probably going to meet with a couple other former, some former board members. So, those are kinds of things that I think come out of either sometimes conversations like, oh, this is a good person for you to meet with, or a different group to meet with. And there's things I know as I've looked at this that I think, oh, I didn't include, I think I included Teacher Education Association. And maybe I put class five, but I know in this district, I think, I mean, we've kind of learned, I think, probably since I developed this, was there's additional, you know, all of the employment groups, in addition to our administrative, as a bit of administrative oversight, um, and employee representation, I guess, as an administrative group. So, yeah, so I don't know if you want to walk through each one of these, or, uh, some, does that help in terms of that question that you're walking through each of these goals and different areas to focus on? I think so. I, I mean, I think it looks like I got that out of order for some reason. So, goal two on this is in the front. Let's just start with goal number two because it's a pretty easy one to find that gov governance uh, board superintendent relationship. I think our other agenda items may is really around communication, so we'll dive a little bit about that because that is also related to this. So again, that would be an activity under the agenda. So let's establish, establish some communication protocols and some understanding. We also have the retreat. I don't think I've included that um, the retreat plan in October, a full day retreat to really um, establish more clarity around that board superintendent relationship. The National Center comes with uh, um, the first one here is around the Gitsum Area, like you saw some initial like, hey, we fill out this um, disc profile as we learn to learn more about each other and our styles and how to work together. The other part of that workshop is going to be and establishing voice to continue to the calls around where is the expectations back and forth. And so I think we'll revisit some of these things back in October. And that would, we can add that to this level of activity that we're occurring. Like I said, is it establish and review regular communication systems with the board? So that is happening tonight. We can come back to any of these two as we, uh, so we can walk through. If anything comes to mind, as we go through tonight, and we can reference back to these um, different goals. Um, goal number one on the next page is um, student success. And so really this is starting to meet with different our principals and our student learning team and getting to know them in these first few months around our systems to evaluate effectiveness, um, what is our data sell us, and, and spending time looking at that. So this is some evaluation of the system as well as how we will be holding each other accountable to some high standards. This will also get tweaked a bit as the board finalizes their board goals. And I think there is a board goal that was proposed around student learning. And so how do we kind of build that into this as well? So if I might, 
activities were good. However, analyzing my, you know, it would be a year, you know, for analyzing my time here, that I think there's only been one time whereby we actually discussed it. And so I think that the activities we have here with the arrows are good, but I'd like to see one added where is if the curriculum um, reflects what the education goes on. From an entry plan and standpoint, can we get a little bit more guidance on what that looks like? Yeah, so, so what I would say is uh, one, two, three, four, five arrows. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe arrow number six would be mm -hmm. um, evaluate uh, curriculum uh, and how effective it is to the in goal number one of acceptance to the success group. Mm -hmm. At this point, I think we don't expect a deep dive, but I, I think it's something where we want to make sure we don't miss that. Because ultimately, that's going to be success, and then of course, we're going to be able to achieve the same thing that we can do to achieve the yeah, I, I see kind of like coming. I remember the, the teaching. Well, I'll give you one to that. That does align with the board goal. Right. Uh, right. The board will hold the school district accountable. I think it's probably the best way to do it. They do that with progress and based on value of the line yeah, I think you guys, I kind of hear two bullets coming out of this. Is one is um, that reflection and analysis of the ABCs that are coming out of that, as well as, and then a separate one that is, I don't know if it's an analysis and probably, I would say an initial, an official assessment or an initial review of the curriculum is the idea of its relationship to, to outcomes. It was like a conversation for a lot of other people besides me. It is, it's, I think that's a conversation we have and we need to hear from our principals and student learning and, and maybe others to say, you know, is that a driver to improvement? Or is that what's holding us back? Versus, hey, curriculum is okay even though it's dated. It's instructional practices that need to be focused. And so I think of that conversation around, but I think, you're right, and so as I sit here today, I think that's a good thing to add because I, I know I've heard student learning say, we're going to develop a list of all the curriculum that exists in the district. I don't believe you've seen that. Okay, I didn't think so. So that'll be important because I've heard that they were continuing that, so I will hold them accountable because I want to see that too. And I want to know how old is that curriculum. Um, What's our plan to do is more to it and see if that also is the kind of people who do it. Right, yes. Every seven years, we need to do it. 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 Yeah, so I. And the middle has five. So I think you're sort of, this, this, even this conversation starts to outline these processes as you look at goal one to decide this, this phase one, sort of this listening, understanding, questioning, this phase two, sort of processing this makes sense and coming back and maybe then some future plans um, as we take this analysis around and this engagement and planning and we start to see curriculum adoption. And I'm going to assume, based on what I'm hearing even just tonight and what I've already known, is that we have we've missed on some of that, and so what is our plan to get back on track with a cycle and sort of coming back with maybe some proposals around what will that look like and um, moving into the sharing of Perfect. So one other final question. So on this page, the phase one, two, and three, is this for the whole reentry plan or is this just for the whole one? This is for the whole entry plan. So entry being kind of focusing on these kind of, all the things that are listed in here, including the next 
few months. So it's kind of July, August, September, October, November. Is, this is the primary focus of this of the kind of, of my day to day work, really, between now and kind of into the. And I would say it says October, November, so I think some of this may still be happening in October, November. And coming back with, well, some of it will be more flushed out than others, but I can already check off a lot of these that have initially started in listening sessions. And, and that doesn't mean they're not fully, like fully developed. I think it's around entry, around I've met with every principal, um, I've met with these, and starting to hear some patterns in the work. Um, so that's really this entry plan is this initial entry into the system. And rather than you know, it's, yeah, developing really clear understanding and then some perceptions and things that learned over, the next, over that first few months, not really engaging a huge, large number of people in a huge assessment of the district. So it's really my own, I'm a personal fast tracking growth of my district. So, yeah, I think it's doable. There's a, there's a, I know there's a lot. Well, it's fine. Um, I hope there, I think it says review policies. I hope there's not necessarily, <laughs> I'm trying to review all the review policies, but that is, you know, you know, five grades over. I'm trying to look through policies so that are relevant to teaching and learning, relevant to board governance, relative to some state law. And we're working on trying to figure out what is our policy state around reports that come to the board, things that are due. I'm trying to bring, do you have those things? So that's trying to just kind of put, a, put something on, especially with new policies. It's a new numbering system, a new kind of way of thinking about it. So it's a bit, a bit more than when I wrote this, I think sometimes. I have in my mind that I know that I know Oregon policy is pretty large and can spin them out. I think then with the numbers, I can do it on a better format around complaint policy and on different ones. So um, I can't do that today with you. Um, so it will be a little bit of a learning process on really fully understanding policy. For example, mm -hmm. I really like the appearance of two, three, four, and five. It's the way it's set up on the page. Mm -hmm. So it's like a one page group. Mm -hmm. Can we move goal one to its own page? And can we move the phase one, phase two, phase three to just behind the by itself? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have another document that I've created that. Kind of turns this into like checkboxes for me. Um, so I think that will maybe be a, a document that I could share back with you. But it is more of a reflection on just the completion of this. It, it, it is all on one page with eight below each activity is awesome. So yes, I checked it off with notes, things, things I'm learning, questions I'm adding. Um, so I'm already starting to do that. So it looks like it should, I'll show you in the next time you meet what that looks like. Right, that's right, yeah, but I think I maybe have the same. It doesn't quite flow. Um, goal three is, is really this entry into this community, especially as a new person. Um, one of the things that maybe this is on here, I, I met with Scott yesterday and we talked about leadership, Kristen County, which is a good little, um, I think it's run through the chamber or whatever. I can shout to them and not taking applicants for this coming year. So it's really a way of um, one day a month to hear different parts of um, how, how Thurston County operates. Um, it's like a civic, it started with civics, government, education. I did hear from the director of that, and they put me on the list for next year. But um, Education Day, the focus is Esther School District. So, yeah, so, so Tumblr is the, their focus school district, and so I don't really know what that means. I just say, I think it's January 4th is Education Day, and so I blocked it out, and I'll be in contact with them around helping facilitate um, what should Education Day look like for them and, and highlighting um, some school districts. So it's maybe something to add in here at some point, but I'm not participating in terms of that stakeholder group, which is later from across the region. Um, it's something I will do in the future. That, that bulleted list is one that I certainly wouldn't mind your feedback because it's maybe just an initial brainstorm. And maybe it's getting, if we have more time, 
or as you think this and say, well, when it says nonprofit groups, I mean, there's not really specifics so of who are the nonprofit groups that I should be in contact with. One comes to mind that I did meet with, I did meet with, 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 with um, together, you know, they called together, it's just called together. So I have met with them, so that's a group. I met with the Boys and Girls Club. They started to kind of pull out some of those, and Boys and Girls Club is called out separately. Um, other other nonprofits. So that I don't know whether we need to brainstorm that tonight. I think that's one of those that we need and as you hear my interest in the civic and community development and well, who are the people I need to talk to, it's good to me to meet with more specific data in this call out. This doesn't necessarily help me a little a little bit. It's, it's a good starting place. You know, I have the Open Pomore Education Foundation but now I also need to have a Topa and other groups um, and those leaders that need to be Added as a separate board item, and I will make sure that that happens. I met with the co chair, I met with the co chairs of the which group met today. That met the CAP group met today, so I got to meet the co chairs of that and some of the other professionals in the district today, so that's those good. I've not that you know, I haven't met with the bus driver group. Um, I've met with the bus drivers and I've met with the director, so that's definitely on the topic for me in the area that we work. I've been a little bit slower in meeting with some of my uh, union representatives just because we're in the midst of bargaining. I haven't been part of bargaining, and so putting that play itself out, I'm not, if they're listening, I invite them to call and I would be happy to meet with them. I'm not necessarily, the will do some outreach eventually, but. I'm, I don't want to insert myself into bargaining, you know, so I don't, so I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to be a little cautious. I want that, let them to do their thing and that team be respectful of their work and not feel like I'm trying to get off track with bargaining or try to circumvent bargaining by, by me. And so I have no interest in doing that, but I definitely want to be done in the first, as soon as we start as a community. So these boys often, I think these are ones that would definitely need your help, maybe not tonight, but probably each one of these. So you can just start with one of like personal knowledge and understanding of the community, its culture, traditions, history, of what, where do you, where should I go, and I'm guessing that's, that could be a pretty long list. And, and I've started doing some of that, but I do want to um, remember some and are there some people that we know that actually that would be great to connect with. Yeah, so I think part of this is who you know, in the first few months I should get together, who in the first year, first year, um, and starting to build that network and build those relationships. You know, we have a, 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 a it's not lost to me, we have a levy in the uh, in February, in November, February, February levy. Um, having, being able to talk to groups, talk to people, building a team that would be supportive of that, you know, I think that's a huge, I don't know if that's spelled out anywhere in here, it may not be. I think probably when I wrote this, I didn't realize there wasn't going to be a levy, so um, levy could be added someplace in here, and I was um, hoping that'll also be a, a, a venue that fits under this goal three, sharing about the levy, how to use those funds, um, what are the plans for those funds going forward, why is, you know, why is this important, what will happen if we don't pass this levy, so all of those, and I'm going out to talk to others. It will be, if I get invited to Rotary, which I'm sure will happen when I get invited to talk about the state of the district, I think that there's a bigger access or something that, that will be one of the things I'll talk about. And I want to have the talking points of what has the previous been used for them, and that we can get students of that as resources. So 
I would say if you want to get ready to try to talk to our chair of council for tribal relations, you can see what you can do to get for that for our own reach out. We'll add that when, when Melissa comes uh, in our next meeting, we'll push that on a little bit. So now we'll get outreach that I think that we can do. Well, I'll add that to this. I think that's really important to make those connections. Yeah, besides going through the list, because that's the best part of life. Uh, yeah, that government, government, will, government, the government, and our team is important. So, yeah, we'll do that. So, I think I saw Melissa shaking her head. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. I, um, if you're looking at training that might take a certain amount of time, if you're looking at training that might be the state offers government to government training, um, that might be something helpful to attend. Okay. Specifically for tribal and like, tribal relations? Yeah, yes. Okay. It, yeah, it talks about so their sovereignty. Okay, yeah, great. What was that at OSPI? On their website? Uh, no, it's, it's through. Um, through they have. Uh, uh, it's not necessarily an agency. Um, Darby, can you help me? Um, like, there's the Asian American Affairs, there's the oh, Affluent Commission. I think it's, it's not necessarily a commission, but it's, it's part of Office of Financial Management. They're, they're of course, not and it, their office of puts on the table. Yeah, so this could be one that you can welcome all the other good ones to do And I think it's, it's, this will be something I'll be asking on the administrative team, the academic team, the team that always help me make those connections and people can meet with them over the next few months and specifically here. When it's a little quieter, July, August, I, you know, this, it is a nice thing. It's like I, you know, it's, I know I'll be busier in the future. It's like, I mean, um, I like, I love the break away from reading some policy, you know, I've been reading through um, a couple of grievances that are coming that I'm going to work with, and some that I can go back and looking at, you know, I've looked at um, agreements, so like reading those again, and I'm going to negotiate, you know, so those would be, you know, spending time, and I'd like breaks from that to go do that and come here for a little bit, so I welcome, I welcome the invitations. Um, number goal four is around organizational efficiency, effectiveness, accountability. This is really then, this is meeting with our director, it's meeting with, and, and really helping me understand what the current state of all of these departments are. And the documents and plans and um, how things work in that's an assessment that we all can help with. Where do I spend some time, focus, energy? It could be reflected in a board goal. I, I think I come in with a, a broader sort of feeling that there isn't any one that stands out that is urgent. But I can, I think I've shared it with you. The transportation has been you know, some concerns, some concerns, concerns from the administration. And some concerns also for the board. It is certainly one that is, you know, we'll, we'll come back with um, what is our plan for transportation. Earlier than other departments, um, now we also have we have fairly new leadership in, in business services, fairly new leadership in, in human resources. So that reflection of those organizational components and departments and coming back and sharing with the board. I think we started talking about a plan, a board plan to bring those groups and hearing groups and I think that's there's some interest across the whole board around hearing an assessment of human, human resources. Where the new directors coming in, what are some initial things that have happened, what are things we're hearing, and that even giving her some additional guidance around, hey, these are some concerns about things moving forward. So we're in the process of doing kind of an ongoing assessment of each department over the first two months, and that reflection will come back. Yeah. 
anything else in that. Um, you know, we'll have a conduct leadership retreat gathering. Um, you know, funny, there's a few of these things that happen. I would say, you know, there's a, I've come into districts as an assistant superintendent and superintendent where mm-hmm. you know, this was a came in July 1 and saying, what was it, a plan? No. That is not the case here. I'm, I'm walking into a week-long leadership retreat, which you're probably aware of, occurred at least last year, maybe prior to that. And another sort of teacher induction, that piece, they are kind of all really well laid out. So this is a team I am coming in and going with their flow. So this kind of says I will do this, but there are things in place, and it's, it's how do I kind of get my way in and start to establish and having conversations. I've already kind of looking at some conversations about leadership um, and ongoing service and some more broader vision, ideas, culture, versus some kind of established uh, retreat. I kind of want to do that with them. I need to get to know, but I have pretty much a team that knows each other from the history of some of the things and leadership, but we're going to still do some get to know you kind of icebreaker things to see them from my own benefit. I think it also quite benefits each other. They, they sometimes think they know each other, but when we engage in some activities, they, they start to keep on knowing. They do really know people and how they show up and what. What's it, what excites them. And we'll do some of that too that maybe we haven't done. So I hope uh, you'll be interested in doing a little bit of the scenario and the scene of this profile and things we're doing the retreat. Also, a part of that. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that retreat include district lead, the district leadership team? It is, advise, it is the advisory council. So all, all principals, District managers, so they didn't transportation, food service. They're all okay. The reason I'm, I was asking because like Wendy is new, mm-hmm. Melissa is still relatively new. I think you have some people in the district office um, that you know. I the principals know each other, but they you know they not worked with Wendy for very long. Just just keep that in mind. No, and I think that's, yeah, that's good. And how do I, how do I make sure to integrate? Again, just, just keep that in mind. That there's people in the district office that have not been part of that team for quite a while. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, so definitely some, we need to do some deliberate team building pieces in this. So, you know, we'll work on doing that. The last part of this is, um, Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and the, you know, the, our team that supports them, it's really important. Yeah, that's the, you know, the Wendy and Sean and myself, like, that, that they're there to support really under, like, a deep understanding of how they operate and how they think and how they approach things. And what are they, what are they really good at? What are they most supporting? Um, we're not all great at everything. So recognizing that and how we support them is really important. The last part of this is around culture, safety, security, and so, and, and in some other broader, I think this last goal sort of seems to overlap, I think, with, the, with some of the others around stakeholder and relationships. But I've already begun, I've done this work long enough to know um, crisis happen when, at any time, and so, you know, we started this week, and um, you know, sadly, with one of our you know, high school students passing away this week, very suddenly that impacts a lot of folks. Um, and what's our plan to help support people? Um, and so we're really about you know, supporting staff, supporting students, and helping them deal with problems. And that's, that right away happened. And so what are our plans? And I would, again, happy to come in with plans that already exist and a team that already exists and some work that needs to happen. Um, they have a great sort of process, but not necessarily a lot of thought of well, what happens when that happens on July 10th. And that, because that causes a bit of other, just more challenges. You know, we ended up putting a care room together with not a lot of attendance, but partly it's, you know, how are we getting that food out? How do we get the team together? Um, do we have a summer plan? You know, because these things happen at the most inopportune times. Now, I don't think 
I mean, that's the wrong word to use. Um, they just happen at times and they're always challenging. They'll happen at, they'll get notice at 9 o'clock on a Sunday night. How does this plan be put into place so that we're going on Monday morning to effectively deal with this? And maybe at the least the most effective can. I don't know if you're ever fully prepared to deal with these. And so, um, it was good to those kinds of things I've already started to do so <laughs> not just like let's review the plan, I'm kind of practicing implementing the plan and how to sort of assess how the plan works and so we'll do some debrief later on with this team, the crisis team, and, and where do you need to show up to things so that we'll be better responding in the future. Um, the other thing I had my first meeting with Stefan Debrief, Debrief. Um, our safety and security coordinator, so we have a chance to meet and start to review his work and his safety and his safety assessment. And you know, we left, I probably left that meeting thinking he asked me to help support some things. And so I, I, one of the things I have is where is, is there a budget for some safety and security things that he wants to implement, including a reunification kit to help, help in making sure that if we have a, an event where we're evacuating an entire school to a location, do we have a system and materials in place to make that go as smoothly and as effectively as possible? So he needs some resources, and so I'll work with our business services team to figure out a little bit of money to support student safety. So that's just even one initial takeaway from an initial meeting with him. Um, I, I do have building walkthrough meetings scheduled with both him and um, Brian later this summer. Just to like, what's your assessment of safety and the box and, and all those different safety components? We're also talking about our SROs, and we've had a couple of things for kids on the roof, for people on the roof, people coming walking through the building. Um, so, assessing all of those things and making sure that our buildings are as safe as possible. That's really, really important. And I think I put this as a goal because it's becoming more and more important to our communities, the safety and security. If we can't ensure this, then we lose trust. In, in the community pretty quickly, so it's important things to have in place and what we can do with it. Um, this also starts to open a positive, inclusive culture, and that's around um, meeting with kids, meeting with staff, meeting with parents, meeting with, meeting with, it kind of overlaps in the stakeholders, but part of this is a more of an ongoing um, developing relationships and open plans and making sure that they are, you know, don't want their feedback and we want to build a uh, culture of trust and relationships and pass bonds, pass levies that will happen when people know what's going on and they're supportive of the direction in which you move in the public history. The part of this is also really, you know, again, gathering feedback and communication and so some of these things are going to kind of start to overlap from one another. That is really the entry plan, which is a, it is robust and there's a lot of things from there and um, it'll, it, it will be the, it is the work of this first few months. And, um, so it's, it gives me some guidance and direction, so it is helpful. But here's what I'm spending my time doing. It's not, it may seem sort of haphazard, but there is more directive in this. It may be like one day I'm at a meeting with a bonus as a board member, and the next day not busy in schools, but it all fits into this plan, and it helps me know that this work isn't. The time I'm spending doing that is not. We kind of said, yeah, time going and spending a half a day walking through buildings with browsing, and it's an important piece of this entry, not a waste of time. I think sometimes people will see us walking around and just walking through empty buildings, and like, what's he doing? And shouldn't he be doing that? I don't know what people think I should be doing. And again, maybe that's like for the board, what do you think I should, if not this, what should I be doing? And so I think that's, this entry plans are helpful to give that kind of guidance to them. What is my day to day world of life in those first few months when I don't, um, I haven't been, I don't have a history. So I have two questions. The first question is, if you want us to evaluate you, Um, I, I, I don't think that was necessarily the purpose of that I created this necessarily. It is, I think, more 
instrumentality of this entry plan, saying, are these the right areas of focus in an entry plan? Am I missing something? It says, if you would have said, you know, because I can tell you there's a goal that's not just to do it. That would be more focused on the plan about tribal relations, a goal focused on equity. But that, when I'm developing <laughs> develop this, maybe with a little bit of like, reflection back to my current, like my previous district, where that was just, was just not acceptable. And again, I didn't know, not knowing this community, knowing the triggers of the word equity with the board that I was working with, as well as a ton of community members, I probably, knowing that these are all public documents, you don't see that as explicitly involved in them. But that could, that could be, so it's not necessarily individually, but I think it's a whole, yeah. what's your success in accomplishing this, and did you do this, and that would be the only way I would be asking for. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to me. In my opinion, you're not saying it to me. In other words, you can say it again. For all students, academic, social, emotional success, and commitment to meeting the needs of all of these students. Yeah. Yeah, I do it without saying the word equity. Yeah. Well, for me, that's fine. Yeah. Because it has to be in your words. Yeah, and I think one of you could, it's not, right, so it's not as explicit. There's not a board already, but if I can pull out where equity becomes the factor in this, then it isn't explicitly put out. If we could talk about it, you know, if we wanted that to be part of more of my entry plan. It's fine as a stakeholder, so you have. Yeah. 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 Does that answer your question? For your first question? So, Melissa, I am referring to the things I'm about to talk about in the entry plan, the evaluation of the superintendent, which is just like a basic portion, and then the team has the two focus areas, with the third focus being the entry plan. And I would love it if you could marry the three things in a group of that. And so, in that way, you could easily get it. Yeah, I think maybe one of the decisions to me when we talk about the evaluation is, you know, I, I shared this that has the, you know, the, the scoring and it's, it's different than the Washington. So this is a, a, the National Center and provided this a little bit different evaluation tool. It has these A, B, C, I think it goes to I. Um, H, I, yeah, so annual objectives. So you end up with that, like a couple objectives and then and I kind of look at this, so this is the, the format of an uh, evaluation tool. And I kind of look at this, even if we say, hey, we're going to focus on two areas, and it won't be all of this, and I'll be able to, and that will be the evaluation, even though when we get through this process, I will provide feedback through the entry plan as well as some of these other, that I'm doing work in these areas, it just is not the subject of more scrutiny around the evaluation. And I think one of the things that would happen is, that feedback will help provide guidance in here too. Okay, this is all right. Yes, we've had accomplishment in this and success, and we want you to focus on now a B administration school district and here specifically in this very clear direction. This is the focus for you too. But I 
I'm always getting feedback. I think I hear what you're saying is putting these in a format where you're getting, I'm putting some feedback of the accomplishing areas. Give me what I'm evaluating, so the work I'm doing in this, as well as it's, it's overview of the entity. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important to make sure that these two things are completely different. The entry plans are completely different than the evaluation as far as the cracking up the specific question of you don't need us to evaluate the one entry plan. That makes total sense for the sum of purpose. So we would personally, all of it, you know, if, if, if I'm okay with all of the goals to turn them, I don't need to track along the activities that you're, that you're doing. If you can even come to you know, the board meetings and say, hey, just an update on what I've been working on here and whatnot. Well, that, that part of it is distinct to the mental plan. The evaluation should be tied to goals that are set, and those goals should be in alignment with the goals that you're One of the things that has always confused me about the superintendent evaluation is in the past, it appears that the superintendent wrote their own goals and just kind of said, here's what what I'm doing. (laughs) And I've missed that connection with thinking, yeah, that looks fine, but ensuring that it's very tightly cut into the goals. So that's the only thing that I would say how how we need to do that. And I think I began to do that. So this this document that said for the evaluation success indicators, and as I said focus area, they can change to goals that are aligned to the goal area one, the relationship with the Board of Education aligns with the first goal. And then we can flush that out a bit more. But this, this providing responsible school district governance, um, so that idea of board superintendent governance relationship is really an area of focus around the evaluation. And that, that could be part of is that a focus that's alignment to the goal that says, hey, that's, I have a role in developing that, starting with communication and retreat and policy. And there's a lot of different and our meetings together and developing as a team. It's, a, it's again a big important aspect of this first year and to be a very focus of alignment. And then the second one is really an academic is tying it probably needs to be fleshed out this educational leadership. And again there's a couple of things around facilitating quarterly reports for most schools around specifically um, I mentioned is it in the ABCs and then around um, providing a more of an assessment of student assessment and then the issues and things that have come out of that analysis of data. And the beginning, I'd say this is like a beginning of a plan that would lead to strategic planning in the future. So that's kind of like, again, I can pick out the entry plan and we can leave that separate around. Entry plan being tied to sort of other work of the superintendent, because that really is what this is. It's, if you look at all, if you look at either evaluation tool, a bunch of the entry plans, this is the work that, that the superintendents do, and it looks a little different in year one versus year two and three. It, it, it starts to evolve over time. And I know with that Washington standards base, I think that system before the first standard of their own vision, you know, visionary leadership, is really though, again, that's not, that's really almost impossible to do as a first year superintendent. That is not a standard for me. It is really understanding what is the vision mission of this district and my initial assessment of are we in alignment? Is our work aligned to that? Are we doing that? Do we, do we believe in that? And then, if not, and again, I know we have a strategic plan that is out of date, and so there's a future. It just is not, that's not something I can do 
necessarily hey, at the beginning of your it's almost starting at the end of your line if that's a, a direction that the board would like to go and doing more in your two really fleshing out a really more robust strategic plan that really then gets into an alignment of vision. So that's it. It starts with standards and systems can sort of overlap um, or the work overlap. I think we need to choose one or the other kind of that Washington standards base. Um, I have used that a lot. I have now worked with a, a couple different boards. I don't know. It feels more confusing. I think it's the language in that isn't super clear. It's been around since, I think, 2013. Um, I don't know what the district contains the boards. <laughs> I you know it feels more or less if I can use it, it's fine, and I can tailor these goals directly to this as well. Um, and then this National Center is one that Doug has provided as we bring some outreach into this group that's going to help us do uh, a board retreat. They provided, you know, um, my mentor provided me saying this. It says, hey, we've done this in California, and it's just boards that found it to be more clarity around the language in this kind of the standard. I think this is really right. I mean, you want, I think you're making, you're making a decision. Here's, here's a different one than you used last year or in previous years with uh, previous superintendents. What's your preference? Do you want to stick with it? I did, I printed off the, this, just the rubric of the Washington you know, superintendent evaluation. Maybe for clarity, it, it's not required. Superintendents are not, you're not required to use this system. Um, there isn't. The requirements. I think at one point was, I think was, there was a free for all at one point five prior to 2013 with people doing their own thing. So this is just again, I think California National Center and using some things probably I don't have the relationship and uh, uh, research ties with the Washington State. Do you want us to comment on it? Do you like some background on that, I could. If that's if you're interested in a little bit more, I'm sure they could provide more. Like <laughs> I think well, this is then like your your evaluation of me. Which one helps you do that better? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they have that or not. And I can, and this is can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Anyway, what I want to tell you is like this. Okay. Sorry, thanks. Um, I don't know if this, is, if this goes with what the evaluation is, but I see a lot of, I'm trying, everyone knows I do, this stuff makes my head hurt. So, um, and maybe some of it is because I don't, I see a ton of activities coming. And I think for me it would be helpful when you said part of the goal with the outreach would be to pass the levy in this um, You know, I don't see any outputs of outcomes. Um, and, and maybe that would be helpful. Um, at least that would be helpful for me, like, to see, or, and I don't know. If if you find it limiting, but at least to give all these activities a purpose for people, like you were saying, walk into an empty building, you know, like, here's why I'm doing this, not just to check it off the list, but working towards something, um, and which would be, it, I'm just thinking of a logic model, right? You have the goal, then you have these activities, and what are the outputs and outcomes, mm-hmm. you know, that you hope to gain? to get closer to that goal, because I'm not sure how to measure, um, I don't know what it was, the first step, sorry, going back to, uh, exceptional student success is what we, you know, right now, the way that we've measured is to check off the list that we did all those activities, mm-hmm. but I think we'd be interested in knowing the progress that you're making on student success goals and what you know, what are the outcomes, so to me, it would be, what are the outcomes you look to achieve? Yeah, it, and I don't know whether that's the student achievement 
specific goals or, you know, one of the things if you look at phase three around is synthesizing, communicating sort of this assessment of, I mean, just on the entry plan, for example, what's the outcome of the entry plan? Is a synthesis of all that work into a report back to the board that says, I did all these things, and here are my big takeaways, um, and maybe some next steps. So that, and that's a, I don't know whether that's what you're talking about, is maybe it's tangible, this will, this will resolve, the entry plan will resolve in a, in a report to the board, specifically on this. Um, is that kind of what you're, because again, I think it's probably early for me to set um, goals that are, I don't know, the data driven and careful. So I, I, this is a, this is a, one of the things that makes my head spin too a little bit around what does it mean to be effective and how do we measure that. So I wonder, following up with what we're looking for, is that the stuff that we need to get done, like And so it's part of, well, and so getting it over there just helps for maybe some guidance for me is what are those things you want me to do? Is it doing those those act, those activities specifically like, tied to or tying some of my activity making sure to the levy versus we're going to judge you as a, you know, I don't know whether it's been one through five on, um, you know, on this one exemplary if you're unsatisfactory. If it doesn't pass, it's unsatisfactory if it passes. Um, so let me, let me, let me, let me, that, I don't, I'm, a, that, I'm afraid for that. Like, that's, that's exactly where I went in terms of, I don't want your success to be with it, because it's not just on you, it's on everybody. That's not what I'm saying. Right. I want, I want to understand, and I don't, I don't what is the intentionality? Again, there, it, for me, I'm trying to understand behind, you know, beyond just checking things off the list, what is, what are, and I see these big, lofty goals, which are great, no one argue with that, but I, I'm trying to figure out what the in between, you know, what the in between is, because you're not going to be able to do all of it. So, in the effort to try to meet these really big goals, then nothing gets done. That's what I've seen in the past, you know, with everything. Maybe that's just how it works, that we keep doing these activities, but I've not seen any measurement of how we get closer to goals. Uh, I, and I'm wondering if what's missing is that we don't have these, you know, these outcomes that we, that we can measure. And if maybe it's not a whole you know, whatever that is, but it seems to me that that should be an intentionality of why you might prioritize something over something else. Because there's so much on there. And if you don't get it done, you're not a failure. But I would understand that you are prioritizing. But maybe it would be helpful to, me to know how, you know, you know, what these outcomes are that you're able to prioritize different things. Yeah, so, I mean, I look at there are certain pieces of work, and whether you're looking at the entry plan or looking at these standards outlined by the National Center, I think, again, that's part of the feedback from are there things, and I think that's the purpose of tonight is whether we pick one of these, it is are there areas that you've seen here that says, yes, this is, this is what we need to focus on more so. I mean, all of it, they, this wasn't created by accident. Like, all these things are important. We're going to do a bit of all of it. In, are there areas that we, I should focus on? And then I think that is a conversation of what, is it, what does that look like? And, that, and I think that's part of it. I think we're trying to flush that a bit out. I, I think I, I don't have, I have not seen good models of this. So I've been in this sort of district level at the table for this for 15 years now, and I haven't seen this model well. Um, so it is a, a bit of a struggle, and I wish I could provide more expertise than I think that. Okay, so I've been searching for it, I finally found it. Okay, so our PSD strategic focus of 2023, this is where we have our main goal areas instructional excellence, systems of support, fiscal stewardship. Mm -hmm. These are the goals of the 
So whatever it is that you're doing as superintendent, you need to be focused on those. So because you're new, that's why the monthly plan and all of the activities that need to happen within that are really important. So what I would vision is that having that be one of them, like you can already lay it out in the monthly plan. And again, I have no intention of micromanaging the activities that you're doing. I'm trusting that everything that you've received will have gone all the right sense. But then where you, where in my mind you would be evaluated is what are you doing to ensure that he is going to do So fiscal stewards is a huge thing. And that's one incredibly important for us for the last couple of years. And so the way in which you do your work and make decisions, you know, within the operations of the district would be focused on that concept of fiscal stewards. So what I would like to in your goals that you can get with your evaluation, start with those things. And then what you can do is establish what would be my goals in your goals and what are some of the activities that I need to do or how I can approach And I think that's where I want to come back to. So that guidance from the board around the focus. So again, sort of getting really clear about what are those things and where does that show up in Washington State Standards or in the National Center? In the National Center, there's those sections of business and fiscal management. That's where it's like sometimes this the National Center is a little clearer around what's the work. And I'm looking at where does that show up in the state standards. It's not for the, it's not as simple. And I'm trying to figure out, like, looking at it without dining in it. And I know this pretty well. And it's probably understanding three around effective management. Um, I know, I know exactly. I do know exactly what that is. And this is a simplified, targeted way of looking at it. And whichever one you want to do this. But I agree with Darby that um, that's a good thing to summarize the most important if that's an important to have a for the educational and that this is also where equity is another major focus So that's district, district established goals, and then the board goal is so separating my end of focus is on this district goal. Board's going to focus on their goals, and not on the time goals. So it's like I can only help the board be successful on their own goals. You're right. I think that that conversation and that reference back to that that document I think is super helpful. And, and again, I, I feel like the, this is where having done this a bit, the, the National Center is a bit clearer. And, um, here's so it's educational leadership. 
that one's probably the same too, unfortunately, so if there is, it's called out quite a bit. Um, and again, you'll probably see lots of things that are the same, that are very similar. Um, system of measurement and goals, understanding if you can form a specific instruction program, organizes and actively encourages the plan program, equipping evaluation and improvement, and there are pretty clear outcomes or clear standards that are kind of developed for the educational leadership and for all of those. And I think, again, the business and fiscal management, business and fiscal management is not as clear to pull out those Washington superintendent evaluation process. So, I know whether that's helpful in saying, hey, as we go into this, this will provide this, so this the standards and this is what we have. And I think today, I just like to sit in context. We talked about um, introducing this and having this conversation today, maybe leaving and coming back and doing a bit more to be thinking on this and coming back on August 10th for the finalization. And, um, so, there is a bit of time between now. And sort of formally adopting this and providing kind of finalization and direction for this coming in. Yeah, I mean, I think all those really helps me understand. And, and, and again, as we start to build board calendars and, and agendas, setting time aside, you know, like, oh, these are these are one of the touch points for the board. And for me. It's helpful for me to be thinking, like, all right, I haven't. Put some of this and open this up a little bit and maybe kind of go back and do some reflection and, and making sure. And, because I think one of the goals for me on this is there, there it should be for all of us. There won't be a surprise that when the final evaluation comes and whatever that time period is, 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 there should be nothing that is a surprise. I'm not giving feedback that I haven't already heard, and you're not hearing anything from me that you haven't really heard. And, and that, that so the goals and the work that I was doing was aligned to the work that you wanted me to do. And that may, that may change as we get to January, February, there may be something clear that says, oh, like, things coming here, we're going to want to change direction or provide, we really want this to be done. And maybe that clear. Um, and maybe the like, development and the like, touch point or outcomes, the development of a comprehensive strategic plan would be a very clear you know, outcome. That has a whole bunch of work and activities associated with it to get to that. The final document is that, and that's important around the mission, vision, and direction and staff and aligned to instructional method. An instructional improvement standard, I can predict that that will always be a goal, a goal for me, a goal for you, and something that you want to do. So I, I have a question. Yes, Rick, um, Thank you. Um, so I'm seeing, thank you, Darby, for finding that document. And so it seems to me, again, forgive me if I'm slow on this, um, that that document, that, that a strategic plan eventually, you know, replaces that document that Darby found. Um, and that we would all... All of all of our all of our parts of the organization would be setting goals in furtherance of the strategic plan. Is that how all of this goes? And maybe that's why we're struggling every year with this if we don't have a strategic plan. Probably, I think that makes sense to me because it's like where if you're saying here's the superintendent guidance and then how should I spend my time day to day, month to month. Where where is the, those focus points? There is the day to day things that just are going to happen, and if, with, in, in lieu of directive and very clarity, it, it is sort of a free for all, and whatever happens happens, and whatever we spend versus very clear direction from the boss is, hey, this is what we want, and then we're not going to be successful. And then I still do all those other things. That I will have some clear outcomes that we're saying. These are very important things. So, talking about, and as, I think it starts with strategic points. I mean, without that, I'm not sure. This is a helpful document, but even that is, those are really broad concepts, right? And what you mentioned was pretty big. The strategic point would clarify what do we mean by it. So, in the end of that, I think we're going to have to trust this, like, we're going to undertake some liberty. Assessment of what does that mean for us today, 
really put her in the course of the next year plus when they could be done. Okay, I, yeah, maybe that's why it's missing, you know, why I'm missing the outcome. But, uh, you, you, you said it, Kevin. The day to day will take over and we will not make any progress on our goals. And that's what I'm struggling with is, like, you know, how, how do we give you some, how do we give you something to be working for us so then we can make progress on these goals? Uh, that, that's, that's my only struggle. We've just been going through and we're getting, I think we're getting closer. I mean, we're getting closer. Um, but I think we're getting closer. But um, I'm not exactly sure how it all comes up. I know everyone is doing, doing work. And I, I'm afraid that we're not seeing the progress because it's not all lined up to an ultimate, you know, how we would measure like doing out. I think the other thing I would add is one reason why it makes it tough is when things are going pretty well. And so my like, initial assessment of, of, of the Tomorrow School District is things are going pretty well. Because if it wasn't, this conversation would be much easier. It would be like, this is broken. This is, we need you to, like, this is the, your work to get this on, under control, to fix this, to rectify this, come back with plans, begin to implement plans, come back and show us progress towards success in X. Um, and I have seen, I've come into organizations where it is readily apparent, like special education is broken, and here's five examples of why, and some direction in fixing that. So that, again, I think that's where I'm also hearing is there isn't really anything super, super clear around this is the big problem or the big area that you should be spending your most attention in this coming year, because if you don't, um, that would be a problem. And if there is something, that, that is, I think, today also to help me. Is there something that I haven't heard? This is the time, I think, to say, hey, maybe you haven't discovered this, but this is really important for you to work on this coming year. So I think where you will, so obviously during the course of um, the country plan and all of that, those things will, will come on. Um, and maybe this is finally where I'm going to be able to tie it together. The four goals. So we had talked as a board about how an area that can it be fair to us to say we've tried, we have tried in the past to understand what's happening with outcomes, with educational outcomes, um, but we could just we could never get there with respect to connecting with what does that mean by way of you know what data we look at or what. So, with respect to we, as one of our roles is to be able to get and to bring them into account for educational outcomes. So, one of the things that has already been started to discuss is that connection with the CEs and, you know, asking that. So, I would say that's a very tangible thing. The board is basically requesting that we find the board ourselves accountable to hold district accountable with understanding educational outcomes because one of the reasons why there's nothing um, popping up and burning in the face of all of us is because we haven't been looking at the data. Uh, there are huge issues because I, I look at data for a living and we got some we got some major problems. We mentioned special education. Educational outcomes for special education students are not in our so, but those are things that will come that will become uncovered throughout the course of implementing this. This is what we expect. We expect this you know, critical evaluation that the district leadership and the building leadership will do in alignment with the things that we decide that they're going to focus on. And then, you know, like you've mentioned a few times, year two is going to be a lot. You know, you'll have much more material to say, okay, I've done it a year now, I know we'll be able to focus on it. That will hopefully be the best of the year. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think commitment to data helps with that for all of us. And some, maybe some things that just emerge naturally. Yeah, there, if, if, the out, if the outcome of, of, the, of this year one work is to have the relationship and the knowledge 
the public district work, you know, relationships with the people, knowledge of how the system works, and you know, all of that stuff in order to have a strategic planning process. Um, I, I guess I just think that doing things for the sake of doing, um, I think things get lost. Um, but if, if, the, if the goal is to create a, a place in which we can all, you know, everyone feels good and comfortable participating in strategic planning and helping, helping the district move forward, then maybe that would, would help me. Um, yeah, understand, understand what, what's going on. Um, and, then, and then we can, yeah, there's lots. The harassment, intimidation, and bullying, that stuff is, is going on. Um, I think there are things that are happening that maybe you think is okay because it's always been happening, but it's not okay. And in Darby's example, of our special ed students, not, um, but the, the gap for our special ed students, that's not okay. I know it happens in other districts, but it's still not okay. So um, it, maybe that I, I can I can put off I can put this stuff off for a year because we can work in towards creating a strategic plan where we can do this. But I think we should be intentional about that. That makes sense. I think I, I think so. I think to flesh this out a little bit further, are you comfortable um, with this? I, I can get a little bit more information in the National Center evaluation tool and, and see. It. Are you more comfortable with that, or are you more comfortable? Is there a direction? Because how I write this will be to the standards of one of these. No. And I think I saw Carol do that last year, looking at standard one and kind of ABCD. I saw her with some documents around some work, and she was sort of coding things to help with the board. Hey, this work is aligned to the standard in my goals. Um, or maybe it was like, maybe like kind of it was on all standards, but it seemed like maybe it was goal seven. It, it was definitely, it was definitely nice. I mean, because I, you know, clearly she didn't have the National Center spot. So, um, I'm comfortable in either direction. I know these systems are pretty, you know, pretty well. The National Center, you'll, you'll, um, we have a representative coming in October. But he's really familiar with this process. I think it's helped um, guide boys in superintendent evaluation. I think that's another service that they offer. He's doing this workshop. They do some other support, including superintendent evaluation. Um, so that is also takes some time. But I, again, I know, I know what he would potentially tell you. You know, it's like this is the evaluation of superintendents is really challenging because you don't get to see me every day, the day to day work, and how do you make like, connections? And this is has to be some good questions. But it's challenging. What does success look like, and what do you expect? And, and having someone facilitate and help with that process can be helpful too. Um, so that's an option. We consider that anyway. I think it would be best to speak to Watson because the training here that we go through is that the only thing that is in the drive is is their tool. Yeah. I'm fine to be surrounded by that. Okay. That way, you're hearing and speaking at the same time. Okay. okay. I, I can, yeah, I'm just kind of concurring from everybody on that. That's fine. Yeah, so I will, I will do some reflection on that. Can I, what I leave to thinking, taking a look at this in alignment with those, those board pillars and picking in, you know, a couple areas of focus. The entry plan being its own, its own sort of work that will lead to, you know, just my own growth and entry into the community. Very helpful. 
Um, and then we can review this all in a minute. I think. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you yeah. can. Uh, thanks. Um, I think, um, you know, it, working towards our goal to try to stay above the green line, um, those, I think that's why I'm getting stuck, is like, those, uh, I want to focus on the outcomes, you know, and so that, that is, that is, again, why I'm getting stuck. That evaluation is talking about some very detailed things. With, and without the outcomes, for, for me, that's where I, that's what I want to say. So the next one is probably going to be thirty quick and big suggestions to try to learn how best to do like how best we would like him to communicate with us. I Carol you what I would refer to as a newsletter template that you would fill in and send out to the yeah, and I think I have one prep for started working on one for tomorrow. There's probably similar about case long. It has just some kind of ability to do What you feel with them, what you feel with them. Well, I think I'm, I, maybe before I, I'm, I am looking at uh, providing a bit of um, I don't know. I, I don't want you to have things that you can get in other ways. So if you want school newsletters, you know, not new, if we have things out in every school letter, I don't see very much value in putting that. You know, you're all busy people, so I don't want you to have to read something and say, like, "I already saw this." So I'm trying to give you some insights. So my my methodology or thinking when I'm doing board communication, if you're looking at a weekly a weekly thing, which I, I really it's it's a nice way of me for just reflection on. What are some of the highlights of things going on? And I kind of end up covering a bit of, of all areas, touching base on this crisis and a little bit of being closure to that, or like what's the next step? And we heard that we were having a um, group, so a little bit of information on that. Um, information on a bit of like this entry plan. I think my message today is a little bit of some takeaways from my meeting with a former board member um, and that went and a few of his little nuggets of wisdom that he's passed on to me that I shared. So a few examples like that and um, it could be also just some, some updates that occurred on weekly meetings with, with board representation. So Scott and our board members of what are the things that we're talking about in there. Um, and so I, I feel like one of my sort of foundational pieces are the board, no, nobody has special treatment. So if there's if one knows it, we all should know that. And for the most part, that's kind of how it operates. So if we talk about it face to face, I'm following up in my email with here's some things that we talked about that I thought were important for, for us to discuss. And so here's the email version. And then I welcome, and we know that when we get the email, we're not engaging in a bunch of um, group wise emails. But I also want to say, like, hey, you can ask me. Yeah, I, I, I really have, I need to have some questions about this individually to me, and so that's fine. Or a call, or a lunch, or breakfast, or whatever we want to do. Because I want that. That's the relationship I want. I think that's helpful because my email will be oftentimes insufficient for some of you. I mean, it'll be like, I, this was, you didn't give us very much. But uh, there's probably a reason for that, too, because you'll get something like, um, we had, uh, well, we have a grievance. And so because there's a process where the agreements can come to you, I might just give you the broad view of the agreements. And I can, I will give you individually a little bit more details to it, but I'm probably not putting the email that's out into the public record. Um, so that's kind of, that's my general approach to this, but it's trying to not give you a dissertation of every single blow-by-blow in every meeting I'm having, but some highlights. You know, I think I, I, I mentioned some of them tonight. And I talked about crisis and um, Safety and security, because that's important. It's one of those things, and I want you to know that that's some work that's going on, and I'm uh, engaging in that, and I'm going to think about trying to find some money for them. We also have, you know, so a change in the budget in the board meeting, if you cancel the board meeting, so a reminder that that's canceled and a little bit of context. 
So that's, I think that's my starting place around this. And I'm not familiar. I think I've heard a little bit of feedback on this more. It's not a tool that I've used in the past, so um, I can learn it if that's something that you want. And so I think that feedback is done. Thank you. I don't want that newsletter around this work with no, I like the way you're getting on this. I don't need a recap of every meeting you've been through, and I know most of them are the same as the world or the list of events that you have I want to think more about the things that are happening in the media. So thinking about it, having a conversation, that's more about the one that came out recently. I thought that would be good. It's really useful. It's not pretty. They're, they're not pretty. They're not pictures. I want to be able to read it, and I'm going to do it. It's going to be like this. I'm curious. Um, I'm kind of hearing consensus on the SMORE. It's fine using email, not using that. The SMORE is a it is a tool our schools are using. I'm curious if your feedback is on, and I'm getting this newsletter and it's not very readable. I know our, I think, um, Lori's reached out to It's not a thing by a team of five. That's why it's not a well, it's important to me that we can be like, well, you're as a parent that attends a school, I find the same form as where it gets with a normal parent. But I have less input than that. Well, it's, so I wanted to have this conversation because I think Lori already reached out to the small people and said, hey, we have some concerns around this. And they're like, well, what are you, what are you trying to do? And can you, can you, can you duplicate it? So I will pursue this not for the board, but for our, just because I think we have a paid relationship with SMORE for the coming year, and I want it to be better. It won't be something I um, necessarily up in, but I will like, we make this more, um, more useful for parents. Um, I know we're going to, you know, one of those communication pieces, um, I don't know if you know this, but we will have a new website. Um, the current I get this context right, was bought out by another company and so says there's some opportunities. Um, so we'll be doing a new kind of updated website. And I, you know, those are things that are important to me around establishing. Um, you know, get rid of PDFs, it always be readable, um, PDA compliant. Um, those pieces, and that gets away from PDFs and those kinds of as much as possible. There should be very few PDFs because it's not, they don't, they don't work well on other feedback on communication, I think we've already started to establish, and I can just kind of lay out some other things around. You know, we'll talk about protocols, I think, in October on this, but no surprise is it for either of us, right? So that's just certainly I'm trying to establish that. If the police are showing up at the school, I'd rather you get an instant email. If that works for you, do you want to that one real quick? Yep. Yes. So, in time, there's a police response. I would expect the text. I don't want to go to my email or whatever I cycle through the email to find out what the police response to it. Same thing with this student's death or a civil interaction. I don't want to find that out here. I want to know that because that's right. I don't even know what happened to you. That's well, like, yes, I agree. That's kind of what's driving this. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't have, you always have your phone. If, if it's a little bit more lengthy, should, it, should a text say, hey, I, have an, I, I sent you an email around this? Yes, that's fine. That's okay. And my, I, perfect, I can do that. Do we? Okay. I can do that. If it's a sticky situation, then the text that I need to talk to you about the phone call. I am also I'm also trying to be thoughtful around you know your own connection. So like in this particular case, I think I know um, Melissa had students at Black Hills, which is kind of what anyone else currently does. So a call to her around the student death, around wanting me to be aware of this. Um, I don't know if everyone needed that a phone call regarding that. It was like, you know, you, know, you certainly can. It's always different. It feels easier to call five people than seven people, so um, I can call all of you if on those kinds of text is fine, and you can call me in. Yes. Perfect. If you need to get a little bit, because, yeah, my text probably will be a bit fairly brief. Um, obviously, I don't want to put dissertation in the text, but you can always call me. 100%. And I think, you know, inevitably there's always a few things that happen that way. But, you know, again, you make every effort that that is, and you're not surprised by that, so that you're well prepared when someone asks you about it. When, when they go, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about? But, yeah, I think that's important. 
and I think vice versa. If you're hearing things, it is okay to let me know when you're um, giving heads up, and even if it turns into a absolutely. Oh, sure, sure. And you know, obviously, and Becky, um, making sure that Becky has your um, cell number, um, you, know, you have hers, um, you have her number, because we're both really accessible. I have yours, and yeah, anytime, and I would say anytime, anytime of night, any day, um, I do, I, I know this job very, it doesn't really end, and so, and I'm well used to that, and it, it's just, it's, it's, it's just what the work is, and it won't, I won't take advantage of that. I, mean, I don't think he will either. But I think you just need to know it's like, just because it's 10 o'clock doesn't mean it's not texting. It's okay. Um, I may not respond. I mean, it's like, you're going to get a hold of him. You're going to get some other things. But, um, you say that, but I got it. I don't know. 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 Absolutely. And you'll start to, I mean, I've already kind of started to establish that communication with my whole team. Um, you know, I want to be respectful of all of our employees and their weekends and emails, and I don't want to see all the people on the weekend. You're not going to get emails from me on the weekend on a Sunday afternoon. And, that, and I'm going to try, if you're getting those from our authority, I'm going to try to stop those. And you may get more on Monday, but like, I want to respect the weekends and that, that having some separation. And, Kind of after five o'clock for the most part, and then wait. That should be a question that we're always asking. Can we wait till tomorrow? Um, most of our staff are gone at five o'clock, so why are we sending this out to, you know, to be thoughtful with that? Is kind of I want to establish that we have our weekly, but so that, I love that system. It works something I haven't really experienced before. I think it's great. It would be a way for us to try, and there's you know, the opportunity for us to. In those individual meetings, and then I think I might have put in my plan or put in there like a quarter, at least quarter, that's sort of my goal around that's more hearing philosophy, your philosophy of education and are we on the right path and that guidance for me that maybe isn't specifically to any of this. It's just, hey, your experience in the community, your experience going out in schools, and um, a lot of our meetings in the office would be kind of appropriate. And list of things that we're trying to talk about and plan for and you know, looking at board agendas. I think I'll add the other thing is uh, you'll probably see me on asking to have Becky be part of more conversations, be part of um, policy, the policy committee. So if she's helping sort of facilitate that and get it to them. So I, I don't want to have to go waste her time or my time again. I can spend an hour with a committee to then turn around and spend another hour with her to try to. Interpret what you told me. I'd rather have the two of us heard it, and I think we'll get a good chance of getting what we've heard right. So she'll be a part of some of those. Um, you'll see her, I think, already established in our superintendent board meetings that happen weekly. But she's at there, at least at the beginning, with a focus primarily on board planning, thinking ahead, agenda items, things that we're thinking about, other things that we want us to add. Um, so I, that's what we're listening for. I want her to hear it directly and help me make sure it happens. So that's kind of that relationship. If you ever want to meet with me, she'll, 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 she's the keeper of my schedule. So I'll make sure it happens. Other communication feedback? I think that helps. The text messaging, that's good. That's a good, um, a good direction for me. And then I'll Too many, I mean, it will be, it will be crisis to the end of the world. Um, it will be, it will be a threat, a threat level that's going to impact the starting school. Yeah, um, and I can see that that would be one case where it's like we have some threat that's going on or some chemical spill that's happening. We learn about it in the middle of the night, and I'm trying to make a decision. Like, 
transferring school and what do I do and what's the messaging, that would be important for you to help play in on because it would be caught. And those are kinds of things that I'm telling you that when you were in the morning, there's a good chance it's going to be on the next one. Yes. No, I get you. I think if, we're, if I'm doing, I will not be texting you. I may, I may send an initial text just to like, like maybe you'll hear and you'll wake up because like I'm calling you in a few minutes. Just be aware. Give you a chance to call me and wake up first. And I think that's probably the threshold that I do. I think this, this, this whatever is happening is going to be on the next one. First thing, I, I, I think that's a you know, it, it can all hope that we can That's helpful. I think we'll establish again we'll, I think more more informality I think in our retreat. Is it a policy versus our the, the expectation practice of that event? It's policy. Yeah. It is a written policy, like a board policy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Certain times, there are certain times that it happens that two times do it. Hey, it's computer. And that's fine. But we give him three days, and so he has until Monday to close the business. Well, I would say the goal, the goal, my goal is Friday. It is Friday. Yeah, it should be Friday. Yeah, that's right. That's the policy as well. Yeah, yeah. It's first come up. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, I think we, uh, we've talked, and, and I think um, moving towards the uh, electronic record. Thank you for saying that. Let's make sure our examples are always on the website. So, including the case. So, one of the things, so moving to um, a, a platform like that, the little board docs is what we're looking at. It's, it's supported regionally and statewide through some organizations. I think that has methodology where it's, those are all. I think we've already passed on board docs before. Passed on it? Yes. We did mark it. But we love it. I think it's great too. I think it does it, but I don't think we can justify the cost. I think it's one of those things that is like longer term, there's some benefits of having in terms of record. I, I look at this as the, in terms of financials, it's not, it's not a significant financial cost. I mean, it's, that was sort of, but I want us to, I think you're going to hear me talk around getting away from sort of the operational. Um, Expenditures that are in the less than $100,000 is a huge concern. I'm looking at long term commitments, and our, our biggest, our base expenditures are people. It's you know, 80, 80% of, 85% of our expenditures are people. That's, that's where we need to be most concerned. The, the different operational things, there's a kind of thing we should learn more about, and I don't want to waste money, but if it's a tool that is effective, it's also a tool that helps us be more efficient, it's a tool that um, it more, provides more transparency, which I think something like that does. You know, there's, a, there's a historical record of finding things for both the community as well as the board, as well as after we're long gone. Versus, I'm coming in today, it's going through emails and paper to find historical. When was the last time we talked about the levy? I can't easily find it. If it's all in an electronic board document, you would be what was the agenda item? What was the discussion? You know, I want to know like, what was the parameters for the like, last night? That exists at a board level. I just have to go find it and take it. So uh, there's some, you know, so I hear what you're saying. So that's, that's kind of what I'm probably coming with in here. But so, so getting into the weeds on some of the smaller purchasing. Like, let's do the purchases. And I want to be frugal and thoughtful, but if it's will help us be more efficient, if it's helpful for the organization, I don't want our folks to feel like they can't do this. But we can talk about this more of a thing that impacts you directly because you may have a computer in front of you versus a board packet. So you need to 
give me some direction on do you want to go in that direction. The last one I heard was if you know, an executive assistant wants to move in that direction, and she's supportive of that, and the board is supportive of that. I can get you the financial. I don't really know exactly what the cost, so maybe we can come back to the future meetings to find out if there's anything we need to do. Thank you. Uh, no, I want to make sure that we are giving you a good on the website, like you said, because today is what it is to be up there. Policy that says they're proposed by the Florida Justice School Year because it would be, again, you know, the best of that site to be able to put my screen down. That's what the outcome is like. I was an advocate of the I'm assuming it's not up to me. I don't expect you, Kevin, to know about this to kind of up to me. I do, however, feel that plenty of other people were aware of that and chose not to do it. We did specifically talk about it. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I, I believe the requirement is that it's up and posted, you know, two weeks prior to the public hearing. It's not. This is July 10th. New policy. That. And again, I know that's not. There's this, whatever state law is. That's fine. But our policy says July 10th. Yeah, that that should be changed. The, the policy should be changed. July 10th is due to um, nope. due to the ESD, and then get. But that's not what the policy up. says, Melissa. Yeah, no, I, I believe you. I'm okay. just saying we should change the policy because that's just not how it works in practice. I will pull that out, and um, there is probably some additional context that um, I'm, you know, we're, we're looking at some budget. I think there's been some initial outrage around. I just have some questions around. Is it, I think there is something we submitted to the state. It's just I'm, I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, and so before I change, and it may cause a bit of a ripple to our organization if what the initial information I have is true. And so I want to be making sure that's really true before. I engage the board and more of this leadership team. So there is a little bit of a reason because it's like I do have one that I, that I received on the 10th, and it's like, oh, I, I we need to do some more work on this to make sure this is accurate. I had an initial conversation. I don't have an actual document, but some sort of some outcomes that aren't, aren't currently in Yeah, so the whole point that it's due on the test is just to make sure everyone is working on it. It's not due. It's yeah. supposed to be posted on the district website. It doesn't that's say about being due or the final or approved. It says proposed. That's preliminary. Yeah. It's proposed. It doesn't, it's not final. Yeah, it probably, probably was in alignment. With, I mean, if I'm understanding, there was a no, proposed initial um, that was that's required to be submitted to the state, which I'm... You know, I don't know 100% that we submitted that, but I'm assuming we did. And so I think that must be what you're saying. The reason this is to give oh. people 30 oh. days to review this beforehand. Before the public hearing. Yeah, yeah. Before the public hearing. Yeah, that's very important. It, so the public hearing it, it, is not scheduled. Right. And so prior to the public hearing, you have to you have to publicize it in the newspaper. And in that, in that publication, you say that. that and that's a different policy. I, I understand that. But the July, t- I'm telling you in practice, if the July 10th is just to, is just to double check the, the, the state process, not the policy. The process is just to get, is to, to make sure that everyone is working on it. Uh, I'm not referencing, I don't care about the state policy or the worry about our district policy. I'm, 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 maybe I'm with not talking to you then, in case I'm talking to Kevin. Well, no, and I want to, rec- I want to make sure that we follow, I, again, you'll come, you'll hear me, and it's like, I, I expect, I expect, us to follow our policies, and if we're yeah, but, I, but to put out to put out a budget that the budget that's on July 10th. I mean, you could do that. Pro, the, pro, the process, the budget process, would have to change drastically to have it that to have it that complete by July 10th. Because I would not want to put something out to the public that is nowhere close to what's going to be what we're going to be having at the public hearing. I think that would be interesting. 
Well, I would I, ask, given so, so I think it would be, I think it would be fair, you know, you know, if we keep the policy, Melissa just has to start the process a lot yeah, and I think the, I think this goes. I think we'll have a more of a conversation about this because, like, like I said, the policy that I or the budget that I would have been able to propose would probably cause a bit of panic. Probably what? No, what does that mean? I don't think that. I mean, if you're going to propose budget, here it's the middle of July. It still starts in six weeks. I did not know where it can be. No, it's communication on, and we're not. We're how are we communicating our proposed budget? Yeah, I think, well, I hear you. I, I'm messing around. Are we communicating the board of the board's budget? You know, you're right. I'll take a look at that policy and I'll get some information and see where we need to do some more things. I don't have any other information. But I hear what you're saying. When will the board have information exactly about this delay? Um, by August. Prior to the, the sort of Friday before on the stand. You know, it, well, it, it's, I mean, so it's a 10, so it's a week from this, so it would be like. Two weeks from today. Right? It would be by July 28th. Because that would be two weeks from today. So, because we have our, our next meeting. Um, in August, the proposed August 3rd. Right. August 3rd. So that would, right, which means July 28th is the information that I would have in there and more information to you. I think it's where my, my initial like, goal today would be up there and carry the latest. That's when you're going to get some more information. It could happen. There's probably not. I don't know whether we'll post post it online. Um, I'll have more conversation with you. So, um, why are we not following our policy? Why do we have this continued relaxed state? The policy is not only to how we communicate, how we have a communicate with us, the email was on this. So, I would love to see you. When you do if this is not on your agenda, then we have to look at that and find out what was on your agenda, then yes, I should be judging. So, with no further business coming before the board, the regular meeting is now reconvened and adjourned at 8.15.